A new Frontline documentary is coming to PBS this week, titled Trump's Takeover. The film tells the inside story of an unorthodox president who, since stepping into the Oval Office, has vowed to take down the Washington establishment. From Kellyanne Conway to Sean Spicer and Senator Jeff Flake, the documentary includes candid interviews with those who have experienced the president's style of leadership firsthand. Here's a preview. It was the hostile takeover of the Republican Party. The fight between the president and his own party. In one fell swoop, the Republicans sent a message. You're not a king, you're a president. Trump's response is classic Trump. Who am I gonna blame? Don't mess with Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't forget. Somebody needs to stand up and say, this is not our party. This is not normal. Watch online or on air beginning April 10th. And we're pleased to welcome the documentary's producer, Gabrielle Shonder, back to the program. So, Gabrielle, thanks for joining us. Let me ask you this as a first question. With all of the attention that had been focused upon Donald Trump as a run-up to the election, why did you want to now start taking an in-depth look at him after the election? Um, you know, I think that that first year, you know, of this presidency was so critical. Um, it was critical to understanding a management style that the president was developing. It was critical to understanding um, certainly a, a battle that was being waged within his own party. Um, that was, a, that was a, a spot we felt like was totally ripe for, uh, for further study. Film opens up early on, and, and you're, you're talking about a lunch that the president-elect has with Republican leaders, and a, a flat-out knockdown battle develops between the president and Senator Flake. Tell me about that. It's pretty remarkable how hostile this is. I mean, this is, um, this is the, the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party, candidate Trump, who behind closed doors is meeting Senator Jeff Flake uh, for the very first time. And, and Jeff Flake is no spring chicken. He's been on the Hill for um, about 18 years by this point. And uh, Jeff Flake has been critical of, of candidate Trump throughout the Republican primary season and uh, effectively walks right up to him and calls him out. Presidential nominee says, you know, I know you, you know, you're, you're Senator Flake. And Flake cuts him off and says, yeah, I'm the other senator from Arizona, the one that wasn't captured. Because at that time, you know, the president had, um, uh, had really taken some big stabs at John McCain uh, throughout the throughout sort of the uh, primary season, and uh, Flake wouldn't stand for it, and uh, you know, frankly, went toe to toe um, with the new face of of the party, and uh, and one would argue it was a it was pretty unusual for a lunch like that. You also had a chance to talk to advisors, key advisors to Donald Trump. What did you learn in terms of wh what they thought, at least, the strategy was going to be in terms of Donald Trump dealing with the Republican Party, especially Republican Party leaders? Yeah, it was, um, it was pretty interesting to sort of get a sense from Corey Lewandowski and uh, Kellyanne Conway that the president really felt like, um, look, oh, Obama repeal and replace is something that this party has been talking about for seven years. When this president gets to Washington, he's going to expect a, a bill on his desk ready to be signed. And um, that couldn't have been sort of further from, uh, from the reality of, uh, of really, you know, what establishment figures like Paul Ryan and, uh, and even figures like the Freedom Caucus uh, were sort of prepared for. How about the relationship then in the early stages? between the President Trump, and you mentioned the leaders, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell. What sort of things did you see playing out there? You know, these are just folks that are cut from totally different cloth, right? Um, you know, Paul Ryan has spent his entire, um, you know, career on the Hill. Um, everything about this White House is, um, is certainly representing the outsider experience. These are folks that are totally new to the political process. And so there's just a, um, there's a lack of institutional understanding. There's an a, a lack of, um, of sort of familiarity with uh, policy and reform and the process and how things work. And, you know, we, we see that certainly throughout the healthcare debate. I mean, the president, upon um, learning that uh, the House has finally passed, uh, what is really the first step in repealing and replace, um, Obamacare throws a party in the Rose Garden. This is, frankly, you know, uh, weeks and, and months before it's going to 
uh, reach the Senate floor. And so there's this naivete, right, in approaching some of these topics. And, you know, there's a there's a bit of an eye roll you expect folks like Paul Ryan to be, um, you know, to be doing. But uh, but frankly, publicly, they, they have to sort of put on a different face, a, a face of unified Republican government. As you're watching all this unfold in front of you, did you get a sense that, uh, you talked about the naivete, uh, but did you get a sense that on the heels of the, the health care, let's call it a failure, um, leading up to what, what the administration and many people have applauded as a great success in terms of the, the tax cuts, did you get a sense that the president and those around him we're learning. We're getting a, a better idea of how this whole thing works in Washington. Yeah, I think you, you certainly do get a sense that he um, he has learned. He has sort of been trained on the job, right? And we've said that about other administrations. That's not totally unique. But, you know, what is different here, and, and tax reform is a really great example. I mean, uh, taxes, uh, cutting them, any type of reform uh, is something that, you know, frankly, the entire party can rally around, right? This isn't something that's extraordinarily difficult to pass. In fact, if they hadn't passed this, we'd be having a totally different conversation. So um, there is something, you know, very important in this achievement, but it's also not something I think we can look at too closely for a, for a right. true case study. I mean, I think this is very much an administration that is still figuring out how to work with Congress. There's a remarkable scene here, a lot of remarkable scenes, but especially a remarkable scene where the president basically picks up the telephone and calls the Washington Post to complain about the health care failure. You know, now, we know that in the past, that was part of, of how he did business, picking up the phone and, and making phone calls. But how did it strike you, as you're chronicling this, to see the president of the United States pick up the phone and call the Washington Post? Oh, it was, it was remarkable, but it's sort of what you expect from this White House. The president picks up the phone, uh, calls Bob Costa at the Washington Post, and essentially gives a play-by-play -play about the failure of um, of health care in the House. And it's this incredible moment in which he um, manages to create some distance, right, from his own party, from this particular issue, one he's, you know, talked about throughout the um, you know, election. And it's, uh, it, it's pretty um, successful, ultimately. But I think I was shocked. I think a lot of members of the press were shocked. I think Robert Costa was shocked. Um, but he was really delightful and talked to us about it. Well, you and I both used the word remarkable. And I think the word remarkable is appropriate for this entire film that you put together. It is a marvelous look inside of this administration, giving us a sense of what's been playing out down there, controversies and all. Uh, Gabrielle, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us. We appreciate it. Again, just a, a fantastic job on this film. We, we appreciate it, and, and we congratulate you. Thank you.